Hey y'all, welcome, welcome to my channel. My name is Donna from AxeRadTech.com and I help you go from the classroom to the extra room with ease. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to get a good lateral hip x-ray. No matter the size of the patient, no matter the difficulty in how they might rotate or little things here and there, just little tips that can help you make it better. I'm in need of an x-ray, x-ray. Just to tell you all, because I don't know if you all saw the last one, I actually did a video for the positioning tips and tricks of getting a proper AP pelvis. Again, no matter the size of the patient. So I'll link it above and you all will check that out. Am I on the right side? I think. And you all will check that out as well, right? The link will be in the description. So, lateral hips. The initial setup, meaning your tube, your bucky, your SID, that kind of thing, is the same as you would set it up for the AP pelvis. 40 inches SID, your in bucky with your grid because you have a larger part needing more photons and you want to reduce these low photon, low energy photons from adding muttling and graininess to your image. Um, you want to get the best image possible. So 40 inches SID, you sent up a tube for the hip. Um, depending on mm, what would I recommend, I still recommend like for a hip you put it lengthwise you to just the anatomy and how the direction of the hip falls off they could put it crosswise but then that would mean that you're over bending at the femur like they would have your femur as like a 90 degree angle to your body and to me i believe that is very unnecessary and in most cases a little uncomfortable for the patient right so it's just a little angle right so there's the the, fe the head of the femur here there's the acetabulum and this is about the angle that the leg will be for the knee to bend and the leg will be up this and this will be a nice little um, lengthwise 10 12 image right 10 by 12 um, inches image receptor or if you have direct digital you have one digital detector that's fine you color me to suit right so now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about centering and centering tips and centering positions. You want the patient to be oblique, right? They'll be lying supine at first. They turn to the side just about halfway. By the way, don't let them just turn the upper body because they kind of like to do that for some reason. Make sure that they turn the hip as well halfway to the side, about 45 or so um, degrees oblique, right? And once they get that turn, they're going to ask them to bend the knee slightly and rest the knee, let the knee touch the table. You don't want the knee to be sticking up awkwardly because then it would have some weird distortion and we don't want distortion. By the way, that's a video I want to film soon, right? Magnification and distortion. I don't know if I'll get to do it today because the sun is literally setting. I don't know if you're, well, you probably can't tell, but the sun is setting now. It's time to send up the patient. So I already have your your um, straight tube, perpendicular tube, hitting the film, hitting the image receptor, everything lined up nicely, tube detented, all of that in order, right? You want to next center your patient. So you're moving the table now. Once you move the table, you're centering, and I have a video clip for this that I actually showed for the pelvis, and I'll be showing it here, but explaining it further, right? You want to palpate for the ASIS and for the pubic cell. Now, as a new student, you would want to palpate for that. As a veteran or as a well-practiced student, you probably don't need to palpate for the sump because it's kind of obvious where the sump is, right? And it's less awkward and less uncomfortable for the patient for you to palpate. By the way, you're not palpating and pressing like this there, please. This is not a piano. You don't want to make your patients uncomfortable. You can palpate for the sump like this. So this is the patient's body or area you press start from above don't start too low start from above and take like about two inch increments or like an inch increment and you feel the bony projection of the sympth and you're good to go once you have your asis and you have your sympth you know where things will fall in between there right you draw in your mind of course an imaginary line between the asis and the sympth and then you find the center most point and from there you move down a bit just about two inches not too crazy and there's where you'll find your hip joint right your acetabulum and the femoral head nestled in there <laughs> right 
and that is your centering for the hip now when I do lateral hip x-rays I always and I mean always feel like after I line up and everything I still check for the ASI sometimes I even use the up, upward ASI meaning obviously the patient lying down one side higher than the other sometimes if you're on the side you can't reach across a few so you would use the upside ASIS to get an idea of the uppermost border of your collimation or of your image receptor. I do this because once you have your ASIS on, you more than enough have room for the hip. Another thing I do, my collimator box, I tilt it so that it can be sure to catch that joint because that's the main reason. Like, Part of the main reason for the image is to see the joint and you don't want to have the box straight and then, I don't know, for some weird, like, unimaginable reason, you happen to not or very closely cut it, right? You tilt the box to shape to make sure that you get that. And the other thing you will do after you feel for the border, the ASIS, to make sure you have enough room and you check your drawer, pull out the bucky, see your cassette in the range, right? The next thing to do is look out for the synth. We know that the synth is not a requirement for the lateral hip. You really want to see the hip and pass of the femur, right? Just about a third or so of the proximal femur. But this is a huge tip, you guys. You want to include the pubic synth visually. It might look obviously, it will look obviously rotated, so you wouldn't actually see the synth like that in detail. But you visually seeing that the color meter is just at the border, that um, medial border of your collimation, where that synth, where the light cuts through by the synth, you know for sure that you went in enough to catch the hip joint. Because remember, where the joint is, where the um, head of the femur, like just imagine, right, right? Head of the femur, femoral shaft, right? Where this pocket for the, fem the femur is, it's inside because you have the head of the femur. You have the greater trochanter laterally, you have the lesser trochanter medially, and it comes in with the femoral neck at an angle. So the hip itself, this will be the femur if you're standing up straight, and the hip joint will be a little more on the inside. So once you have that border at the synth, you know for sure that you're getting it. For sure, for sure, for sure. Okay, let me show you. Let me just start. This is my hip, right? I already demonstrated this before but I just want to give reference so this is me with my leg turned to the side I don't want to show too much right this is a family friendly student friendly platform <laughs> right so you turn the leg to the side angle the patient halfway right and now you already center and everything the collimation box will follow the length or the direction of the femoral shaft so it will come this way down this way up across this way and back up and the medial border of the collimation light will pass through the region of the synth just to make sure that you have your hip which is right here that you have that joint inside and you don't happen to mistakenly especially as a student you're practicing and stuff you won't happen to mistakenly nip the acetabulum because I see that a lot of students. A lot of students come like so, so close to it. Now, as radiographers, right, it's normal that you kind of rush in to do things quick and you might slip up too. Like, we are human beings at the end of the day. You can't expect us to be perfect. But at the same time, like, accuracy is important, right? Um, you need to be optimal. And with practice, the likelihood of errors happening is very low. Like, I love the way my lateral hips come out. It usually comes out good. I want to say like 98% of the time and that's just me thinking of it up on my head. But it has been a long time since I've taken a lateral hip x-ray. Even on a 10-12 and it's like cut where I would need to repeat it, right? So check for that simp. Like if I don't check and make sure my simp is on and thing, then I might have to repeat it. And since I've like discovered this trick, I don't know if anybody else does it, but since I've done that, it literally never happens. It always comes out, right? So yeah, that's it for this video. Um, I filmed three videos back to back. I think it's getting too dark now. I'm, I'm ready to wrap it up. I came home from work, I did, I filmed. I'm hungry, I need to rest. <laughs> so, and I have work in the morning. So that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.